what we're talking about. We just said it's a martini launch. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I am Council Member Rafael Salamanca, the chair of this committee. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee. We have Council Members Gibson, Barron, Constantinides, uh, Acting Chair Deutsch, Lansman Levin, Reynoso, Richards, Torres, Traga, Chair Adams, Chair Moya, and Rivera. I want to thank Chair Moya, Chair Adams, and Acting Chair Deutsch for their work on our land use subcommittees. Today we will be voting on a number of items referred out of our zoning subcommittee in accordance with section 11.10 of the council's rules. I am calling up to this committee the following items which were referred to the planning subcommittee, which is necessary to enable the committee and council to act within time limits prescribed by law. They are LUs 149, 150, 155, and 156. I will first describe the applications that have recommendations from our zoning subcommittee. We will vote to disapprove LU 169, the application for Calle Doa Chelsea, uh, for a revocable consent to operate in an undisclosed, unenclosed sidewalk cafe at 461 West 23rd Street in Speaker Johnson's district in Manhattan. We heard testimony that the restaurant's bottomless brunch results in overserving of alcohol to patrons and is a nuisance to the community. We will vote to approve LU-170, the application by Two Hands Tribeca LLC for a revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe at 251 Church Street in Councilmember Chin's district in Manhattan. We will vote to disapprove LU-171, the application by Sugary Goddess Corp, DBA, Y.E. Oyster Arc, Wazi. Waza, for a revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe at 4486-4488 Broadway in Councilmember Rodriguez District in Manhattan. We will vote to approve LUs 172, the application by Sylvia L. Duran, DBA Grito Mexican Grill for a revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe at 1555 St. Nicholas Avenue in Councilmember Rodriguez District in Manhattan. Today we will also be voting to approve LUs 141, the post office, which has the support of Council Member Reynoso, and to file LU 142, Nobody is Perfect, an application for a revocable consent for an unenclosed sidewalk cafe in Council Member Rivera's district. This application was withdrawn by letter dated August 1, 2018. This afternoon, we'll be voting on modifications to an application consisting of six separate land use actions submitted by the Economic Development Corporation that together make up the inward rezoning LUs 135 through 140. The inward rezoning proposal would rezone 59 blocks of the inward neighborhood to require contextual buildings and new affordable housing and to promote economic development. Additionally, the proposal will facilitate publicly accessible waterfront open space and two major affordable housing developments with community facility and economic development components on city-owned land. The council is modifying the zoning map and zoning text application in response to concerns voiced by community members and elected officials regarding potential displacement of existing buildings and residents, the urban design of the new building stock and affordability levels of new development. The council is modifying the zoning map amendment, LU 135, to eliminate the upzoning in most of the commercial U along Dykeman west of Broadway while retaining the upzoning of the inward library and certain adjacent sites. Additionally, the council is lowering the proposed density on certain blocks with large concentrations of red regulated housing to reduce the incentive to redevelop these buildings. Even in areas removed from the upzoning, the council is still mapping the proposed C2-4 commercial overlays and allowing commercial development on the second floor of mixed buildings to promote economic development. The council is modifying the zoning text amendment, LUs 136, to remove mandatory inclusionary housing option two and to allow deep affordability option. This means that the final version will map MIH option one and a deep affordability option, which together require the deepest affordability possible. Additionally, the council is modifying the application to make the proposed mandatory inclusionary housing areas and transit easement zones match the final upzone areas. The council is also establishing new urban design rules to require building base heights in certain areas to sustain match the local neighborhood character which consists primarily of 
six floor walk up buildings. To facilitate these rules, the council is creating four sub areas within Upland, Upland Area Sub District D, each of which has locally appropriate base heights rules. Additionally, the council is retaining the proposed special district in the portions of the commercial U removed from the upzoning via a new subdistrict F in order to promote affordable housing and contextual urban design. The council's modification would allow developers in this new subdistrict to take advantage of the lower parking requirements proposed for the rest of the special district if they provide at least 20% affordable housing at 60% of the area median income, which could be achieved with 421A, option A, and follow the quality housing bulk rules th that result in contextual buildings. Additionally, new mixed-use quality housing buildings in the commercial U will be relieved of their parking requirements for commercial and community facility uses to promote economic development, which is similar to what is proposed for the rest of the special district. To protect the light and air of existing buildings, residents, buildings in this area that use the quality housing bulk rules will be able to take advantage of proposed special rules found elsewhere in, in special district that allow new buildings to go 10 feet higher if they set the buildings back from existing windows that are on the near lot lines. And the council is also retaining the 25 foot limit on bank footage in the commercial U to help retain the local retail character of the area while removing the other ground floors controls for scope reasons. The council's modifications will retain the special permit for new hotel construction throughout the entire special district and also allow for gyms and health clubs to be developed as a right throughout the special district, even in areas rem removed from the upzoning. The only other op action the council is modifying is the proposed acquisition of the library, LU138. While the City Planning Commission approved an acquisition of approximately 18,000 square feet based on the size of the current library, the ELISA development is projected to contain approximately 20,000 square feet of library space, and the Council is modifying the application accordingly. The community is represented by Council Member Idanis Rodriguez, who has engaged with the de Blasio administration and the community for many years to make sure that this process results in the best possible outcome for the community. I would like to invite Councilmember Rodriguez to make a few remarks prior to the vote. The Council Member thank here. you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone. You know, I was getting phone call from Chairman uh, Salamanca, La News, Moya, members of this team. Your support has been incredible. Uh, Jason, Chief Staff, Speaker, uh, James, George, Raju, my team, Staff, chief of staff, everyone, former DDC commissioner sitting back there still right now, even though we end up meeting together, we were doing the rest in the district's office like at two in the morning. They were able to wake up and still being working with us, Yvonne Stennis, all the community leaders, and most important, the community that spoke loud and clear. They said this rezoning is too big. We need to downside this rezoning. We, this rezoning will hurt the local small businesses in Dagman 207 and Broadway. We listened to them loud and clear, and we carved, we took out that area, the U from this rezoning. But also, we respond as, you know, a leader that sometimes has to engage the community, listening to their concern, going back and forth for the last three years, to a fear of gentrification a fear gentrification that has happened because it, our community was left out. When many of you guys were able to get 2,000, 3,000 preservation in the last couple of years, 2,000, 3,000 new affordable housing under the Giuliani, the Bloomberg, Washington Heights, Northern Manhattan, Marble Hill, in the last 50, 25 years, got less than 1,000 affordable housing as new units. So today, for the first time, being responsible not only to the present, but to the future generation, we have a plan that start bringing 1,500 new affordable housing with a plan to close some public sites, DOT, sanitation, the Vermilia Avenue, well, we, well, very easily we can add an additional 2,000 new 100% affordable.
But in this plan also, we are looking at other ways of how we can preserve and protect our tenants that for many decades, they were victim of Vantage and Pinnacle and other back landlords that use those tactics to push our people out. We're listening to labor. We know that the city has to do better to train, to bring responsible contractors. And even though that process takes time for the labor to negotiate with those contractors, it, we as a council also incorporate the language that I got two nights ago from labor and basically the same language that were shared with us is including this document. The language that we can afford that address how the city has to provide better training for construction workers, how the city has to work harder to make contractors responsible. So we, we know that there's a lot more that has to be done. And I'm looking to work with my colleagues and laborers to address on how the city had to provide a report on how those uh, who oversee uh, those contractors should make them more accountable. Uh, so today I'm here to say that we're listening to the community, that there's a lot of accomplishment that we got in this rezoning. There's millions of dollars that we are bringing to invest in our park, to invest in our transportation, to invest in our cultural. We are building in the tip of the island, the first in the nation immigrant research center performance art. The research center being run by, will be run by the library and the performed arts under the cultural affairs department. They will work with the local cultural group and they will have at least 10, around 10,000 square feet for cultural use. We are also bringing to our community a PTEC where CUNY City College working with the DOE and a private partner, they will work in the next couple of months to bring to Northern Manhattan a 9 to 14, a two-year college around a STEAM and mechatronic education. But we are not waiting for that plan to be developed. Starting in September, the STEM Institute at City College will be home at George Washington High School where they will get the funding to train and retrain the teachers around STEAM education from elementary to high school. We also got major investment to build a new pier, a new dock around the Inwood Park in the west side of the island where the, the EDC is committed to do a feasible study to look at the possibility that we can expand the ferry services to Inwood and also to bring, build a, a pier that will be used for recreation and education. So no plan is perfect. Uh, we cannot say that we are responding to all, every single concern, but I can tell you that working with the mayor's office, James Patch, EDC, and all the agency, we, all the support that we got also from the land news and many colleagues that went through previous rezoning like Vanessa Gibson and others, they share with all those, those experience. Here we are telling our community that this plan aim to maintain Northern Manhattan as a community where working class will live in dignity with a path to take to middle class as many of those children as possible. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Council Member Rodriguez. Uh, we will be voting to approve OUs 144 through 146, the East 14th Street and Irving Place Tech Hub applications for property in Union Square, Manhattan and Council Member Rivera's district. The New York City Development Corporation EDC and 14th at Irving LLC are applications for a zoning map change, a zoning text amendment, and a special permit. These actions will facilitate the redevelopment of a city-owned site currently occupied by the two-story PC Richards building with a 21-story technology-focused office and a retail building in Union Square, neighborhood of Manhattan in Council Member Kainas Rivera's district. We will be voting to modify the East 33rd Street rezoning, LUs 147 and 148. Applicant 33rd Street Acquisition LLC seeks a zoning map change from R8A to C1-9A and a zoning text amendment to apply MIH option one to the rezoning area, which is in Council Member Rivera's district in Manhattan. Our modification will be to add MIH option two to the zoning text amendment LU 
148, which applies to a larger area than just the applicant's property. We will be voting to file LUs 166 and 167, the 40-3182nd Street rezoning, which was withdrawn by the applicant on July 16th to take it off our calendar. We will be voting to approve LUs 149 and 150, the 1019-1029 Fulton Street application for properties in Councilmember Cumbo's district in Brooklyn. The New York City Department of Housing Preservation and Development and Fulton Star LLC seek designation of an urban development action area project, UDAP, project approval and disposition approval of city-owned property at 1027 and 1029 Fulton Street and zoning special permit to waive required off-street parking at 1021-1029 Fulton Street. These actions will facilitate the development of an eight-story building with approximately 50 residential units and 6,100 square feet of ground floor commercial retail space to be constructed at the dis disposition area and six adjacent property owned, pro privately owned lots. We'll be voting to approve LU 155, the North Con Conduit demapping for property located at 219-01-219-25 North Conduit Avenue in Council Member Rich's District in Queens. This application is to the map a portion of a city-owned street and to sell it to the adjacent property owner to use as parking area for a commercial business. We will be voting to approve LUs 156, the Bolton Commons application for property located at 263-267 West 126th Street in Councilmember Perkins District in Manhattan. HPD seeks approval of an urban development action area designation, an urban development action area project, and the disposition of property located at Block 1932, Lot 5, 7, and 107. These actions will facilitate the development of a new mixed-use seven-story building with 36 affordable housing units and commercial and community facility space. Uh, now I would take remarks from Council Member Carlina Rivera. Any remarks? I want to thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak very, very briefly. I just want to thank everyone for their support on these projects. Um, I appreciate all of the work done by the, the land use team, of course, my staff that is here. And we are hoping to bring some really great uh, jobs, housing, and really working to preserve the character of the neighborhood, which are the three things that I have been focusing on and bringing to my district. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity, and I appreciate all of your support. Thank you, Council Member. I just want to acknowledge that there's been a lot of incredible amount of work, time, and effort invested in, um, in today's rezoning. And I want to thank everyone who has been so involved in making this a successful project. I've said this time and time again, but that we are in an affordable housing crisis. And as council members, we need to make moves and show our communities that we're serious about addressing this. We need to get more units online so that the thousands of New Yorkers who are struggling to live in a city where wages aren't increasing nearly as fast as rents are rising can have a place to live without fear of displacement. No rezoning is perfect, but there's a lot of good in this project. There are big wins. From the deeply affordable units to more equitable access to waterfront and green space to the housing and local business preservations to the creation of local jobs. And although I will be voting on this project, I want to express my disappointment with the administration on not strengthening labor language and worker protections through the sponsor review process, which at the moment is vague and can potentially allow bad actors to benefit from development receiving city subsidies. I want the administration to know that for future rezonings and land use application, responsible contractor language and worker safety protection must be an integral part of that process. I congratulate Councilmember Rodriguez for seeing through this process and thank the tireless work of the land use team, the countless community leaders and advocates who've engaged passionately these last few years. On the Tech Hub vote today, I want to congratulate Councilmember Rivera for her leadership on the project. The digital age is here. And our city needs to have qualified pipeline of talent prepared to take on these new jobs while encouraging innovation, creativity, and the spirit of entrepreneurship. I commend the council member for her vision on this project, fighting for her neighborhood preservation and vital scholarship funds for the future of our tech leaders. Uh, and with that, are there any other comments from members of the committee? No. I will now call a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and the local members to approve LUs 137, 139, 140, 141, 144, 145, 146, 147, 149, 150, 155, and 156, and 170, and 172. 
To approve the modifications, I have described LUs 135, 136, 138, and 148. To disapprove 169 and 171. And to file LUs 142, 166, and 167. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on land use. Chair Salamanca. I vote aye on all, and I'm going to ask the clerk to please call Council Member Levin and Reynoso next. Thank you. Levin. Aye on all. Reynoso. Aye on all. Gibson. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Council Member Gibson to explain her vote. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to all of our chairs and to all of my colleagues who are here. Um, we've been here since early this morning to get this hearing up and ready, um, but I certainly want to first congratulate Council Member Rivera on the Tech Hub project, and I want to extend my congratulations to Council Member Rodriguez on the Inwood rezoning um, as someone who's certainly uh, very, very passionate about rezonings and understanding that I went through my own for three years um, in Jerome, you know, as the neighbor of Inwood right across the Harlem River, um, there's a lot of commonality, a lot of challenges that both Inwood and the Bronx have faced throughout the years. Um, and I certainly appreciate all of the advocates, the community board, um, and many, many others for really working with uh, Council Member Rodriguez to come up with the very best plan. It's been mentioned before, no plan is perfect. Um, but I truly believe that in the spirit of the future of our communities, of preservation, of making sure that the families that built our city remain in our city, we fight for our children and for equity and fairness and for all of our families. Um, I'm truly grateful uh, to see a plan put forth that has millions of dollars of investment. Um, anything that happens in Inwood will have an impact on the Bronx. Anything that happens in the Bronx has an impact on Inwood. So I congratulate all of my colleagues who have land use items on today's agenda. Um, but certainly as your neighbor across the bridge, council member, I congratulate you uh, and the land use staff on a job well done. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Uh, I just want to recognize majority, majority leader, Lori Cumbo. She'll have a few words. Thank you, Chair Salamanca and Chair Moya. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to speak at this particular hearing. I want to thank my colleagues for their support. This is a very important project to me in my district. As many of you know, uh, there is an incredible issue with gentrification and the pushing out of businesses of color, particularly on Fulton Street. Fulton Street at one time used to be known as the Bogolan Shopping Center, and it was the largest stretch of black-owned businesses anywhere in the city. But over the last 15 years, many of those businesses have closed as a result of escalating costs, as well as a change in the demographics of this particular community. And so this particular development was very important to me because we were able to uh, negotiate uh, with the developer to ensure that 50% of the commercial real estate would be uh, locked in at 50% below market rate. And this would be an opportunity for many of the local businesses that have either closed or in jeopardy of closing the ability to be able to secure uh, a business space that they can develop and grow their business in the long term. Because diversity is ultimately what has made Brooklyn, New York what it is today, and our commercial corridors need to reflect that diversity. And I'm hoping that with this particular uh, development that we will be able to negotiate better commercial leases uh, for local businesses in our community so that way we can preserve the character um, and the continuity of our communities. I'm also very proud, as many of you know, um, I have an art background and they have also agreed uh, to ensure that the artwork of Baron Claiborne uh, would be utilized throughout the building. Uh, they have also committed to doing um, plaques um, as well as stars, noting many of the local, I would call them celebrities, uh, but I would say communities, activists, and leaders um, who have been prominent throughout the community. They've also uh, established they are, they are going to work with 32BJ to ensure quality service building jobs, and they are going to do local hiring in the community um, with an organization called Team Brown Consulting, who has done incredible local hiring, ensuring that many um, individuals of color, particularly from the Walt Whitman, Ingersoll, and Farragut, 
Target, um, Atlantic Terminal, and Lafayette Garden Houses um, are employed on this particular project. So I thank you all for your support. Thank you for allowing me to speak on this particular project. Um, this one actually has AMIs higher that I have traditionally uh, supported, but in exchange for the ability to have an affordable corridor, I thought it was important to do that. So the AMIs for this particular project are at 30% of permanently affordable, um, and they are at 120, and five of them are at 120, and the remainder, excuse me, are 30% of the dwelling units as permanently affordable with no subsidy or public financing for the affordable units. 10 dwelling units will be permanently affordable pursuant to the voluntary inclusionary housing program restricted at 80% of AMI and below, and five dwellings will be restricted at 120% AMI. Um, I thank you all so much for your support, and I thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Deutsch. I know. Baron. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Barron to explain her vote. Uh, thank you. I didn't hear all of the testimony earlier today about Inwood, but I've got lots of concerns about it. I think that the council member was able to negotiate some fantastic add-ons, perks, or incentives, whatever you want to call them, the PTEC, uh, the money for the high school, the access to the waterfront. My concern is that 20 and 30 years from now, who will be the people who are living there who will be able to really continue to enjoy all that will be in that area? I'm very concerned about that. I've been told that uh, two of the private owners uh, owners of the private land have made a commitment to maintain affordability and that there will be, uh, I think I have 35% at 60% and below of AMI and then 30% at 120% AMI. My question is, is it in writing and are those the exact words that are in writing? I have found that developers often say something that does not materialize when the project uh, comes into being. So uh, I'm going to reserve my vote. I'm going to abstain on that Inwood project because I want to read it and see it for myself so that by the time I cast my vote, I will know exactly in, in full session, I'll know exactly what it says. And I also want to know what percentage of the total number of units is going to be market rate. People tend to sometimes not say, and oh, they have all kinds of reasons. Councilman, we really don't know. It'll be whatever is at that time. But I want to be able to uh, be able to give deeper consideration to that. And so I'm, voting, I'm abstaining on that, and we'll cast a more decisive vote when we come before the full body. I'm also voting no on land use 149 and 150. I've spoken to my colleague, and she understands my position on that. And uh, on all the others, I'm voting aye. Constantinidis. Chair Salamanca, I want to join with your comments on when it comes to speaking uh, about the lack of strong contractor, good contractor language, and uh, local hiring. Uh, we have to work together, um, and I look forward to partnering with you on that. Um, I will vote aye on this on all. On all. Lanceman. Richards. Aye. Torres. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Torres. No, I share the sentiments of both uh, the chair. Um, it seems to me we hand out billions of dollars worth of rezonings and subsidies to developers without demanding even the most minimal standards in labor protection or responsible contracting. And at some point, I'm just no longer inclined to support rezonings that are based on a fundamentally broken model of development. So I'm going to abstain on the inward rezoning, and I will vote yes on everything else. So. Traeger. Adams. Aye. Moya. Aye. Rivera. 
Thanks to all my colleagues. I vote aye on all. All items on today's land use agenda have been adopted by a vote of 14 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, no abstentions, with the exceptions of land use items 149, 150, which have been adopted by the committee, 13 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions, and land use items 135 through 140 have been adopted by the committee, 12 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and two abstentions. Thank you. Uh, before we end, I would like to acknowledge James Lloyd from the Land Use Division, who is leaving the council to join Gail Brewer's office as a director of Land Use for the Manhattan Borough President's office. We will miss him and wish him all the best in his new position. With that, I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, Land Use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>